How's it going? Welcome to another episode of the James Lab Podcast. Today, my special guest is Shiloh Massive. How you doing today, Shiloh? I'm great, bro. Thanks for having me. Dude, thanks for coming on the show. I've been looking forward to having you on since we started the show. Yeah, great to be here. It's a, a super nice place you got. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. So you have a long history in the industry. You know, you work with Eddie Lepp, among other people. You want to go into starting out around uh, Eddie Lepp? I think the, that'd be a great the place. Lepster. Yeah. So uh, back in the day, you know, I lived in Wyoming and uh, it was the late nineties. I was on a, a, a student loan repayment program for rural areas. So they, you would go serve the community for two years and they would pay your, all your student loans. It's amazing. Crazy, right? So Wyoming's a different kind of level, you know, you got Jackson Hole and then you got Wyoming. So um, I was like, oh, yo, can I transfer out of this thing? You know, can I get another spot? And there was some spots in California. And this is right at the time that Major G was passing in Mendo. And I was following that as like, because I, I, I'm from, I lived in California a long time before I moved to Wyoming. So Oh, Major G, Mendocino County, grow 25 plants. I'm looking at the map of the of the programs, and one's in this place, nice California. And it's right by Mendo. And I'm like, wow, that sounds nice. Little did I know <laughs> um, that it was the meth capital of the fucking world. <laughs> so uh, uh, relocated. And uh, this is the time that 215 is going on. You could get your doctor's note. All right. Boom. I see in the local paper, oh, did I call this number, come up on, uh, come to one of our clinics and meet the doctor and da, da, da. So I'm like, okay, duh, this sounds great. I'm going to, I'm going to go to this. So I put my nice shirt on, you know, <laughs> and I'm like, go to this place and I'm like driving up and it's rural community, Lake County, uh, upper Lake Lucerne road, you take the turn and then you get to the driveway and there's a big gate and, uh, this time it was open, dirt road, go up around the bend. And you, my first scene, I come around the bend and I look over and it's just a field full of weed plants. <laughs> you know, like it's maybe under 200, but in this era, that's a lot of weed plants to have open in your, in your yard. Right. And I'm like, fuck, I remember thinking, am I supposed to be here? Is this the right place? Because if it's not the right place, this isn't the time you want to roll up on a on the guy. So sure. I got up there and there's some other people in there. And you know, the doctor, the doctor, uh, old Mylon Hopkins was a Vietnam medic. And, uh, he, uh, you know, Eddie like pulled him out and was like, Hey, this and that. And he started writing, he made a, a lot of money off, off that arrow, but people would go up there and, uh, get their things. And there's a group of people. And then, you know, there's fucking Eddie. Like, God damn. And this is Eddie before he was Eddie. So he was just like, He's a gruff dude, black Levi's, you know, he's not, he's not the rock star that he became later in life. Swears like, I mean, he always swore like he hit his thumb with hammer, but um, I'm like enthusiastic because my whole life up to this point is about weed, right? Right. And I got to convince this dude that like, hey, this is what I want to do. Where do I get in? You know what I mean? Totally. And I don't think he liked me too much because Eddie wasn't a nice shirt type of guy. And uh, so anyway... I, I convinced him that I was worthy or something. And he's, he's, he, he's like, I'll start you off at a yellow leaf merchant. Little did he know that I had a resume that well succeeded that already at this time. So I started going there all the time. I didn't have many friends. So I had a kinship with Eddie. We became great friends. Nice. And uh, we grew weed together for many years. And Was this like late 90s? This is the late yeah. 90s before it all happened. And, and like I said, so... The more momentum it got and the more people and then the high times started coming in, it became this juggernaut. And, you know, Eddie wanted to take him on and win. So uh, that yeah. was the game. So he wanted to go big and how are you going to go bigger? And the, the real thing, what he was trying to do was, OK, you get your script. We'll grow your weed up here. You get the weed at the end of the year. It's like $10 a gram. It's yeah. revolutionary. And the type of people that are going in there at this time are people that really need... <laughs> You, you know, some help. So it it, it, it was a plan with, with, with multi goals to help the people and to take on the big guy right. and beat the big guy. So we ended up, uh, I forget the year because, uh, you know, I, my son was born somewhere in there and I, I kind of left towards the end, but it was, uh, we grew 40,000 plants right there on the side of the road on the 20. 
It's pretty Lake amazing. County. And uh, the pictures are still around to prove the it. The pictures too. are there. And, yeah. and, and, and uh, a guy, Jason Dunlap, was there for uh, years with a camera. Wow. So he's got a freaking 5,000 hours of Eddie Lab farm footage through this whole period and uh, all, all, all the craziness that went on and led up to the point where uh, <clears throat> Eddie became the Hugh Hefner of weed totally. with his smoky jackets and his parties and his right. multiple wives. And um, yeah, it was, uh, it, it, it was, it was, it was something else. I'll tell you what, it was I, something I else. bet it was an adventure. Yeah. Every so, day, you know, and then, uh, then, uh, you know, I uh, moved up to Oregon for a while and I moved back and and, and I, I didn't have my house anymore. So I actually lived there, you know, and Jack lived there. And then, uh, wow, yeah, it was pretty crazy. Wake up every day and smoke, just roll joints up. This is Massive Jack amounts. post stroke. Yeah. And he still had a lot to teach. You know, you just had to pay attention to the lessons. Right. But uh, yeah, it was an epic time. Epic time to uh, thought we were going to change the world. And uh, maybe you did, you know, legal, <laughs> legalize maybe the you weed. did. And, so, and yeah, I mean, on some level, I mean, you guys definitely had some impact for sure. Yeah, we did. So, uh, tell me how you guys started with smoking. You've been smoking since you're a kid, I take it. Geez, so uh, yeah, just where I grew up in the Northwest, it was like I was a skateboard kid, and my homie, uh, maybe I shouldn't even say the name, bleep that out, but. He had a half pipe and, you know, there's other kids and his sister had like a wicked collection of bongs. Remember ceramic bongs? And they're like, Absolutely. like we're saying wizards and just stuff like that. And, you know, we kind of started smoking around the skateboard scene. And then uh, there were some older kids that were in our neighborhood and they were, uh, they were foster kids, but they were far advanced. And I'm telling you, this is in the eighties. These kids had briefcase full of the, kryptonite lime green crystally insane weed when we were little kids you know so yeah. we're just running around the woods smoking weed that's awesome so the genetics back then what kind of stuff were you just smoking for me it was green and brown we had green yeah. and brown and, and there was like so outdoor yeah so where we were we didn't have that outdoor i didn't see that 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 stuff till later we didn't we didn't really have we didn't have brick weed we just had kgb yeah. Killer Green Bud. You got Green Bud? Green Bud. Indoor. Washington. Northwest. Yeah. Right. Uh, Northern Lights. Um, the G13s. The mm -hmm. Pez. The these Pez, strains. Yeah. But before the names started coming later, those names, but really we called it the Killers or the Cripplers. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, they started coming names like Pez. And then you'd start knowing oh, the Northern Lights and stuff. But right. it was Green Bud. KGB. Cripplers. It, I don't know if it was related to the Crippy strain, but it's like we just called it the Cripplers. Yeah, it's interesting. We, I mean, I think we saw names in high times before we saw names on the streets. When, you know, growing up. Yeah, you know, I was. was this was 90s. I was smoking way before I seen a high time. So it was like, and then uh, my my mom used to send me down to my grandpa when I was growing up and. I was like 13 and stuff and uh, maybe, maybe a little over 14 and, and uh, I'd go say, hang out with my cousins and, and, and their dad was a Vietnam vet. And my, my grandpa would take us on these big trips. We'd go to like the air show in Wisconsin, da, da, da. And then I remember one time before we left, my cousin Shelly, she's like, come here and into the, into her dad's bedroom. And in the closet, bro, there was a stack of high times. It was like high times and easy rider magazines. Yeah. And then there was a garbage bag, black trash bag. And she reached in it and she's like, she's Bunch like, of grab some of that. And so I grabbed some and I grabbed high times too. So she took two handfuls. I took one and that just pretty much fueled our summer as kids. Just And that was like, that was like that lime green skunk nice. bud. Yeah. And ever since then, I was a smoker, really. I just, uh. And it was skunky I, skunk bud, right? It was like skunky, real, not skunk like sweet bud. skunk, like this skunky. was the brotherhood skunk, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Skunk. The stuff we don't see anymore. I no. feel like you don't see skunk. No, that like shit that. would got busted so much in that time that it it couldn't exist anymore because it, it was it so would get strong. you busted yeah. and and whether you were know, growing it or you, whether you're buying it, you could smell it. Right. It's cat piss too. Cat piss is yeah. another one. Uh, yeah. Some of those old flavors. I feel like a lot of the flavors back then. 
I mean, it's not that weed was back better back then, but I feel like in general, there was a lot of good stuff in the 90s when we first started getting names and stuff like that. Right. I feel like the quality, the, there were more passionate people involved. And so there was, it was also more dangerous and a lot of other things. There was a lot of other factors, but I feel like there was a lot of good stuff and a lot of unique flavors. There was more diversity. I mean, there was all kinds of sativas, especially. There were tertiary, tertiary terps that have been bred into non-existence. Yeah. Like THCP, mm -hmm. THCH. They're, they're finding this again in small amounts in roadside hemp in Italy. Wow. And it gets you extremely high because as a kid, like you got so high, you couldn't get the, get the lighter to the bowl. You know what right. I mean? So there was some other chemistry going on in the plant that exist, existed in such small levels that it was obviously the first thing to go with uh, not poor breeding practices, but a bunch of people that are trying to breed a plant that don't know much about the stuff behind it and right. don't even know that that stuff exists to begin with. So yeah. it's like no, nobody's fault, but it was just in its natural state. It has some things that were just more powerful. Totally. Yeah, it's interesting. And with the gelato hype now and the direction the market's gone, it's completely changed. Right. There's guys like Kevin Jodry. I don't know if you've been following Kevin and the stuff he's been doing, but like he's been on this adventure. He was in Colombia for a while. I see. see, see and now he he's was Pakistan. in Pakistan. Yeah, Pakistan. I saw that. Silk that's, Road. Side. That's what it's all about. Yeah. yeah. You know, that looks like a legendary uh, crew. I know some of the dudes he's seen over there. And yeah. You know, big up. That's that's really that's really cool, and that's that's the stuff that got me excited about it in the beginning. The ability to maybe go on trips like that, and you see him, he's like looking undercover with his hat, yeah, and his the beard, beard shaved like a certain way, and that's cool, man. Um, yeah, I feel like we need to get back into that kind of stuff. Yeah, to get some more diversity in the gene pool. I think so much of this stuff has gotten homogenized. We saw it happen in Europe. In the late 90s, early 2000s with the hazes. Right. You know, everything, haze getting bred into everything. And I think we've gone into the gelatos. And now we need to take a step back. The second everybody started using purple as a qualifier. Bro, we used to genetics, throw the purple strains away. Yeah. We used to throw the purple strains away because they didn't get you high. Right. They don't get you. Well, and that's normal, right? You I know, mean, and then that comes to the thing is there's a fatal flaw in the testing is like, you must have got something wrong that, that that if these purple strains testing in the 35, 36, and they're not getting you as high as a 20-something a, a OG Kush, something's wrong in the science. You need to go back and refigure it out. And we were touching on before the the other terps that, you know, still exist, but need to be found, preserved. Not terps, but cannabinoids is what I meant to say. Yeah. Like the TACP. Well, and there's so many other molecules at play, right? So, like, we've been just looking at, cannabinoids and terpenes we're just getting into the thiols which create like the skunky smells and um, yeah i just saw another article came out uh, the other day about a whole new class of uh smells in cannabis well, i didn't those really have the thiols, time to read right? um, those I, all, yeah. I didn't read it so i i assumed it was probably about thiols but it, it might even be about something else but i didn't yeah yeah i just i just read it, it was a uh, abstract tech yeah, it was, yeah, it was yeah. abstract tep, tech. You tell them, call them up, James. Say that's old news. We knew about these. We styles. knew about these styles, but no, they really did an in-depth yeah, look no, that's at thiols and also started doing studies with people and <coughs> and terpenes. I don't ever want to downplay terpenes. We know that terpenes are valuable, but uh, there's other things that play for sure in the effect, especially when you're talking about skunky things, where or, or like nose burning things. Those those thiols that right, burn your right. nose, they're so small too. Right. So yeah, small small amounts, and then. Extreme. Now everyone's searching for these large amounts of things when it's really, it's really like the small things that count. It's you the know? magic. It's, it's the small pieces. Don't forget yeah. to, you know, admire those moments, those small moments in life as well as in the cannabis plant. When there's like 40,000 terpenes, right? I mean, oh, we're, we're only yeah. testing 40 of the 40,000 that are out there. You know, it's like, we don't even really know what's out there to the degree. And there's such small particles of so many different things. That's that kosher grape soda. All right, there. That's the P5. That was grown in. Uh, well, that's got. Uh, go ahead. That's got a good good flavor. It does, right? It's creamy right off the get. It's like creamy and a little grapey. Sun grown, Nevada County, the Ridge, North San Juan. It's a little fresh still, but, uh, you know, I got a bunch of other stuff too, but that one, yeah, that one stands out for sure. Oh, it's, it also makes hash. Nice. It's got a really distinct flavor. 
it's not super bright with flavor. It's more subtle, which I like. Uh, yeah. It's got a lot of subtlety to it. It's not like everything else everybody's smoking right now, which right. is like, I feel like this P5 is what all the new uh, what is the, hybrids. What is the P5, though? The P5 is a Gelato 33 TK, well, which is what Pluto is. It's a backseat of the Pluto. Oh, it's a backseat of the Pluto. Pluto's good. It's a little bit different than the Pluto. I feel like Pluto's amazing. This is a little, uh, it's it's well-rounded like the Pluto, but even more so. I feel like all the Gelato hybrids are trying to be what this stuff is. So that was a, in fact, I didn't even come up with that quote. Somebody said that last night when I was in an event. So we were smoking on it. And yeah, it doesn't, it has something that's a little different than, than the gelato. It's like a liveliness. Yeah. Like a, like an opener at the end. Yeah. It's floral and it has a really long finish, which I like. But yeah, this stuff's great. And I like that that burns down to the ash. Like literally you could put the joint out, fire it up five more times and smoke the roach and it would still taste good. Right. So, and I think that, it tests above 5% terps. That's the telltale. Yeah. When you smoke it down to burn your lips. So for pheno hunting, when I'm sharing bags now, instead of giving people flour, <sighs> instead of giving people flour uh, to do whatever they want with, I'm giving them joints. Right. And everybody gets on, they're on the same even playing field. I feel like it just kind of evens out the playing field a little more. Yeah, totally, bro. Um, yeah, sometimes it doesn't look the best, but if you smoked it, it would beat these other things that are just like, oh, just a gleaming picture. Yeah. I've seen it happen more, more than once. But then at the same time, and, and all over goals, it's got to click the others too. So right. a lot of the time in the pheno hunt, we don't give it as much time. And like, and like we were going to grow a, a crop for – flowers totally so they get a little beaten down and right i'm a firm believer of growing it out at least three times too like one time doesn't really tell you the whole story right the, the genetics change over the period of three generations typically it'll stabilize somewhere in there and yeah but it's a lot of work a lot of smoking yeah i like the idea of coming up with some go some guidelines like that like you just said grow it three times or like a lot of strains like people are like oh my strain and and, and this and that and they did it's just like a single cross with one somebody else's seeds. Like it should have four parents right. or four generations before you can claim it. You know, yeah. you breeded it four times, or it had four distinct different parents, which is like four generations of breeding. Also, so well, we got to get into breeding. that. So, yeah. what is a lot of the breeding out there is just participation awards? Yeah, yo, you get this and you get that. Let me tell you a story about the birds and the bees. Okay, you're gonna make some seeds, guys. But then the real work is in taking that to something else. So Right. Like Making we, it your own. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it's funny because everyone's doing these F1 complex polyhybrids that are just like. It's, uh, it's beyond the bottleneck. Yeah. Well, and it's, they're like, I have access to good genetics, so now I make good seeds. And it's like, well, you made a new cross. And that's, that's great. I mean, I think I'll commend anybody that makes some good genetics. I think yeah. that's great. No, nobody owns seed breeding. No. No one owns seed making. Well, and it's a group effort, and I think uh, we're all working on the shoulders of the giants that came before us. At the end of the day, we're, we're uh, in the infancy of this industry to a degree, but like we're working on thousands of years' worth of work, technically yeah, we're, speaking. We're, we're, we're just, we work for the plant. Yeah, we work for we're the plant. We're working on creation theory. We're all you know? stewards uh, to a degree. This is you know? like, you know. We work for the bees. We, we, it's like we take our role way too seriously. That ego gets in the way, you know. I'm like, let's talk about that for a second. Like we come from the 215 and then it got buried by, by the, the proposition 60, what was it? 64, 69. Yeah. And, 64. and, and the first thing that went out, out, of, out the window was compassion. Right. The whole thing about 215 was compassion. You found your way because you believed in the medicine and the plant. And through that, you found some people that really needed your help and, and needed that. And as soon as it changed, there was no more compassion. Yeah. When slowly but Profit, surely- Profit, greed, and ego took its place. Yeah. But there's still balance. I mean, there's people like us that are out there still trying yeah, to do the, it. You know bro, I mean? it's, there's, there's so, a lot of warriors. It's yeah. a big war. And there's a, I'm not going to discredit the world. that There's no, uh -uh. but like, you know, and, and the main thing is just like, we didn't get any cheaper. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it actually got more expensive. 
And, we, and it got maybe you could get it get get it easier, but uh, you didn't have to wait for the guy to call you back and drive around town. But uh, but you know, it's like yeah, to the retail guy, it didn't get right. any cheaper. But on the wholesale, it yeah. just they broke oh, everyone's like backs, killed the farmer, chopped them off the knees, and right. That's pretty crazy. The the consolidation that's happened over the last and the people failing and giving up. But then you see who the real passionate people are because it's like they won't do anything else. I feel like there's a lot of people that watch the show and there's a lot of people out there. Yeah, there's a lot of people that love weed. That that their love whole weed. life they're, they're, is they're, weed, plants, they're medicine, uh, all, all, all that cool natural stuff. I feel like this is where I'm meant to be at this time in this place. And my whole life, <clears> if you look back, at, I talk about my 18-year-old self being really happy with who I am now. Um, we've gone through all these phases and it's like the people that love weed, you, you can't, you know, you, you can't bypass those, we, those, those people or necessarily like that. That's what's happening with these big corporations too. Some of them are like forgetting about the passion side of it. And they're just focusing on profits. Right, right. And you know, it's one thing to focus on profits and care about quality and care about the plant. You know I mean? I think profits are part of the model too. Like you have to, you know, we're all trying to feed our, our family. There's nobody out there that doesn't love a little bit of money. Absolutely. You know, there's a lot of battles to pick. People, yeah, they, they opened it up for the corporations to come in. And, and you know, corporations is just a way to form yourself to protect assets and stuff. But right. I know you say that that mentality uh, uh, of that whole thing. But, yeah, there is a worldwide, worldwide uh, militia of true ganja people from coast to coast and everywhere in between. Yeah, and there's young ones coming up too. They're super passionate. I see these younger. I mean, I'm 46, and so I'm seeing these guys in their 20s that are super passionate that have been smoking weed for 10 years, and they get it. They get the passion. They get the quality. Some of them, maybe not all of them, but I guess it's like that with everything in life, right? So let's uh let's dive into talking about uh, one of my favorite strains of all time. All the, right. You know, I love I love Skittles. I love everything Skittles. about Skittles. I love the Terps on it. The Z Train. The Z Train. It's funny because Skittles does have a ceiling, right? So, like, I feel like I could smoke Skittles all day and it gets me here, where some other stuff definitely either gets me here or takes me a little higher. But Skittles is very social. Yeah, totally. It doesn't, like, yeah, uh, incapacitate you. It's so, very social. It's fun. It's it makes me feel good. Great like, for the golf course. Yeah. Women love it. Yeah, everyone loves it. Everybody loves it. Atlanta, yeah. It's the... I don't, I don't see what they're all fighting about. Totally. Everyone loves it. What are you fighting about? Seriously. Come on. You guys are fighting over plants and alphabet letters. Yeah. It's, 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 Get over that shit. Yeah. That, it's that, interesting. That, that Terps belong to the streets by now. Yeah. Get over that shit. Skittles is a game changer though on so many levels. Um, as far as when I saw it for the first time in 2014, there was, a, I mean, I, TGA was breeding Terpy stuff. Uh, there was a right. lot of other people breeding Terpy stuff up to that point, but nothing. When Skittles, it kind of changed the game. I remember the first time I smoked it to this day. Me too. At Sierra Nevada Reggae Fest. I wasn't feeling the best. Yeah. Feels he had that shit. It was like, damn, homie. That's a whole that's a whole new thing. Cause we're all smoking Kush and Sours. Yeah. And shit is like, and it energized me. Yeah. I, like I said, I, I was I was like kind of laying down. I was having some back pain. Came through. What up, Shy? Boom. Smoked that shit. Boom. And I was like, energized and that flavor was like cotton candy right game changer changed the fucking world it yeah so i smoked it in june 2014 at the high times cannabis cup right brandon came i was with kenny morrow from tycom technologies and noel from <laughs> yeah noel nectar ne nectar nectar noel yeah and so shout out. i was yeah shout out to noel I haven't oh talked and tricom tech the yeah. legend the the legend the yeah. legend great author come great, on dude he's done all kinds of amazing stuff when i was young i was reading that dude shit yeah he was the dude on 60 minutes that you know that was all blacked Le out back legend. in 96 or whatever yeah legend for sure but yeah i was with him and noel at friggin the high times cannabis cup in june of 2014 and brandon came up and where was, like, was that in sac or it was in San Santa Francisco. Rosa? yeah it was in rosa i believe huh. and brandon came up to us and fucking was like you gotta try this it's skittles and Back then, there was a lot of stuff going around with names where it didn't taste like it. Yeah, you know, it was described. Right. There was so much mm -hmm. stuff, and I'm used to. You know, I was used to this world where it was like cat piss tasted like cat piss, you know, and skunk smelled like skunk. But then somewhere around the 2010s, it seems like we got the names all fucked up. Uh, cookies was okay though, because at least there was something related to Yo, cookies. Yeah, when that shit first came out, was it next level. 
fire. Yeah. Um, that shit existed before it came out too, though. So that was just, it was just yeah. that shit. It was a mythical strain. Definitely. Yeah, it was good. You know, people loved it. And it was another one they'd smoke down to, to the roach. It'd be delicious yeah. if you grew it correctly. And then Sunset Sherbert. It's an interesting one because I feel like it never got its day like Cookies did and Gelato did. Because Gelato Yo, came out so quickly. It was about to, bro. It was it about was, to. It was like, you ever been to the races and shit? And it was like, Sherbert was everything. It was people talking about. Then the Z just came out of fucking nowhere. Yeah. Took over the fucking planet, dude. There's not a there's not a country in the world where they don't know what the Skittles is. Seriously. So, shout out. Antarctica. Game changers. Probably Antarctica. Game changers. I don't think you're allowed to go to Antarctica, but let's not get into that. <laughs> yeah, that's... No, I don't know. Yeah, My dad went to Antarctica when I was a kid, so I don't know. Yeah. They're like, oh, that's the end of the end of the earth. They got some crazy... You a flat earther? I'm not. But Soma, yeah. my good friend Soma I love Soma. Is. My OG Soma. Yeah. Big and shout I've, out to Soma. I, yeah. I've had some of the most amazing experiences with Soma. I'm not convinced we're even here. So how is the earth flat around? So I don't, you know what I mean? I'm not here to argue theories about that. I'm here to uh, uh, cultivate bliss within myself. So, totally. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. It gets to the point. It's like people want to divide and conquer so much or even separate us by... Democrats and Republicans and people with long hair and short hair and all this stuff. And really, we're all just people at the end of the day. 100. That's a trip. Well, yeah, people that like weed. Yeah. So, yeah. And it's amazing that we get to work with this plant. So, like, I just, I'm still, I still smile. No, I get, I'm like, you know, you're like, saying that. I'm like, smiling at you, brother. Totally. It's like, we're, we fucking get to work with weed. This we're is, together in this, yeah, you know? It, and it's wild because... You know, I see a lot of people that had this vision of who they were going to be when they were older. And this is exactly what I wanted to <laughs> Me do. Me too, bro. And I'm uh, like. My homie came through from high school. He's passing. He's like, dog, you're one of the only people that I knew my whole life that did what you wanted to do as a kid. Yeah. Totally. And it's like, and the weed, <clears throat> it's always been good, but like, it's pretty amazing now. I mean, I think there's some interesting oh, stuff yeah. still coming. Oh, man. I think, think these kids are changing the game every day, bro. Yeah. Blowing it up, bro. But this, even the even the stuff like this, right? This old, like we look at some of the old school. The piff is very popular now again, and hazels uh, are starting to come back. But this isn't like appealing to a lot of people, but it's appealing to me. Yo, I, I got a, a piff cross uh, or the Cuban black cross in there because yeah. they're just different phenos of the same. But it's a Oaxacan pineapple thyme master Kush Cuban black haze. P pineapple thyme master Kush Cuban black haze was the male. That's awesome. On the Oaxacan, let me dig that out. Yeah, it's real interesting. So with that PIF and the Cuban Black, because I've seen the PIF S1 and the Cuban Black, there's definitely some diversity in there and some real interesting Yo, combinations. We can't tell the story without saying Neville's Haze. Yeah. They're just different phenos of Neville's Haze. Oh, yeah. Different people. And, and Neville's Haze different. is amazing. It's Neville's Haze. Yeah. A5 Neville's Haze is actually smells like cat piss. That's the closest thing outside of cat piss that I've ever smelled that was This pissing. one's the Oaxacan uh, pineapple tie. Master Kush, Cuban Black Haze Cross. Dude, it even looks very. We were talking about terpenaline earlier and, and getting high off terpenaline. And it's like terpenaline should cause a panic attack because it's, but like, yeah, you could see. So you got to smell these side by side. It's I, real interesting. Smell this one first because yours has a little bit more uh, limonene. I, I, it pick, I pick up the limonene. And the pining heavy on yours, uh, where it's brighter. You know what I mean? It's fucking good. Should we like, do a mix? <laughs> Seriously. Should we mix this? Yeah, I, I think. You want to roll it? Yeah, I'm down. That's. We got. We're gonna smoke some sour diesel too. I got yeah, some sour grown by Josh Freeman, good friend. He's like the best sour girl I know. I love the sour. So when, like they, and then there's we were talking about mis mislabeling things and stuff, and uh, I think the sour that when I came. Uh, associated with the sour was actually the Virginia skunk and they were just yeah. calling it sour diesel but it was actually Virginia skunk and uh, interesting I don't know like there's so many people telling the same story it's hard to keep it right well, it's a like, lot of people don't want to tell a lot the of truth, crap fishing going on but uh, yeah this I'm pretty sure that it, it was uh, Virginia skunk well so my understanding, you know, there's a, all kinds of opinions on sour diesel, but sour diesel originally, I believe, was just a bag seed of the Chem 91. 
There wasn't breeding work that went into it. Uh, the story is in my book, actually. Right. You know, and I think it's the same story that Mojave and I talked about on a podcast a while back. But and uh, my buddy at Root Down Genetics, he has. You know, seven- Gabby. We got to get that dude on the sour story. Those are some of the kids that yeah. brought it out. Those dudes, original dudes. We don't want to mention all yeah. those names, but fucking like right. the, the, there's there's some stories and there's some different things. But yeah, yeah, continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The weasel story about the weasel right, and all right. that good stuff. Um, but yeah, I don't even know where I was going with that. But uh, um, the bag seed sour diesel. Oh yeah, sour it diesel in the bag seed and root down genetics. So root down genetics. My good friend Alan, uh, who I've known for a long time. <sighs> He actually has fingerprint work done for my flora DNA and he has some genomics stuff done on sour. And then his genomics show Oakland six Allen? different Oakland expression. Allen? Yeah, Oakland Allen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's a good dude. Yeah, for sure. OG. Yeah. We we I would definitely have some of his stuff for sure. Yeah, I think he's he's doing some real breeding work. Yeah. You know, there's there's a handful of people. There's doing more real than we work know. Work. You know, yeah. it's just such a weird small circle that people are like, oh, this is it this is it. And it's just like, bro, I'm a complex human entity. Yeah. The only thing I don't only just breed plants and mm-hmm. I love plants. I collect corn seeds and sunflowers and totally. I love All that stuff. But like to define someone just by the act of, Oh bro, you put plants in the, and then you make selections and then that defines your essence. No, bro. It's like, I just, I just lo- love that you could grow something in the ground and like get a melon or a, or a tree or this weed, you know, it's, it's an amazing thing. Totally. Yeah, it's amazing to be able to grow stuff out of a seed. You know, we were we were seeds at one point. Right. So this is going to be a tasty one, I could tell already. Yeah, that one's going to be crazy. Yeah, there's studies about can- uh, terpenes that cancel them each other out, too. Right. Like, there's some new stuff coming out. Yeah, you know, that's the thing is now there can be a lot more studies. Yeah. There's so many like things you could study about the weed plant. It, 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 it uh, anti aging. You know, you smoke enough weed, you don't get wrinkles, right? You know what I mean? Totally. There's some truth to all that stuff, especially the anti aging stuff. And then it's just Look like at- people overdoing it with high power shit all the time. I like yeah. dabs at night. I, I, do I don't roll with like a dab rig or anything like that, but I I, <clears throat> I like hash and rosin. But yeah, and I one. like the Puffco and I like the Rosin Tech, the uh, the Focus V Carta Two. That is cool. I, they're both cool. I'm not, I'm not a hater on either one. I, I like the technology on both of them. <sighs> yeah, uh, dab. They are all kind of the same. That Dab X rips. What other? What other one? The Doctor Dabber. Yeah, it's a shredder. Yeah, I mean, we used to have the volcano electric dabs, bro. It's like I, I back in the day, maybe it was two two sixteen. I don't know, but I was sitting there with a uh, lot comedy, and uh, he had turned me on to fucking uh, cold starts, and I was like, "Yo, yeah." In the future, everyone will cold start their dabs, <laughs> yeah, totally. And look at us now, just cold starting. <sighs> Did everything. you ever smoke it on coal back in the day, like back with the in tube? The day, yeah, yeah, back in the nineties, that was like one of the ways. Early two thousands. Did you ever vaporize with Eagle Bill? No, 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 no. That sounds amazing. Yeah, he was one of those Amsterdam uh, dudes back in the day. He had that huge globe vaporizer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about? Do you remember that cat? The uh, now the the Pope of Dope from New York. Pope of Dope. I remember that name. A lot of people don't know this, and they need to check it out before it. Uh, there was a dude, and it was like in the '80s, and he ran this delivery service in New York. Yeah. You could call him, yeah, and or and he wore the Pope thing and stuff, Pope of Dope. He had eight hundred yeah. number in the, and he ran it forever, bro. Yeah, that's awesome. And it, like that's like I was like, this dude is on another level, bro. He just ran this whole uh, enterprise from right. an eight hundred number. And to, and my bicycle messengers, dude, it's so crazy. Yeah, back in the day, people taking risks. Yeah, that that dude is a legend. They need to they need to do a documentary about that guy. Yeah. So, what are you doing now for work? I know right now. So, uh, I got a lot of shit going on. Um, you know, my dudes at Pacific Reserve. Uh, we were working together and then, you know, they, they got acquired by uh, collaboration ventures and um, we'd been working together for a while. So, you know, they reached out to me and we, we worked some things out. So I'm 
uh, the head breeder over there. We got over 200,000 square feet, uh, mixed light indoor and the new farm in, uh, North San Juan massive farms. So we have like 12 dispensaries, maybe a little more in the state. And, uh, we're vertically integrated where all the weed we go just goes into our stores and our brands. And what that allows us to do is keep the price down. Right. And last month we were number one, number three, and number five in the top, uh, top fuck, uh, the top 10 eights sold in California. So we were three in the top five. Wow. So it's pretty exciting. You know, it gives me a huge platform to, to do more things and, you know, definitely grow more seeds and be active and, uh, got a lot a big machine behind us we can really do anything right any product on our shelves 85 percent of the products are ours whether it's a pre-roll a tincture gummies drinks yeah you guys so you guys do everything fully vertically integrated fully vertically integrated you know That's awesome. and, and uh yo my guys they bootstrapped this off, off 10 milli and uh they built this machine and it's just uh it's a great evolution yeah for the massive for sure so we got a lot of massive stuff coming out and uh you know working on some stuff um all kinds of stuff so we just uh got a new hash lab so we're going to be working more on water hash and rosin bringing that to the table because that's one of the things we have been outsourcing but so you guys have been pheno hunting too it looks like yeah like yeah we did season. uh we've done a couple uh pretty big pheno hunts the first one was uh in salinas and our uh we're still in salinas so these guys were some of the first in salinas when that whole green rush uh blew off and now we're like one of i think there's only eight farms still in salinas but we're still there we did uh i think it was a 36 strain pheno hunt out there wow and how many seeds of each do you typically pop i think we tried to do at least uh at 10 of each maybe maybe yeah. there was more of certain strains yeah there was 50 of a few strains but uh yeah it, it wasn't huge numbers it was just more crack crack the surface and then uh See what the, you got. See what you're working. It with. was overwhelming working through the terps in there, and uh, it, it was really hard to pick things that 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 weren't like really hitting. Mm -hmm. And some of the things, just you know, how you had to pick because they didn't really fit the commercial uh, paradigms or, or right. like all the markers. But some of the most phenomenal weed you ever seen. So we'll be able to get back into that later. But right. we did another pheno hunt up there in uh, um, North San Juan as well. And that was, uh, I think, like 12 different strains. We were just up there last week testing uh, just different hashers and just ex exciting stuff like that. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so when you're doing selections uh, at scale, what are the selections you're looking for? What are the, the main traits that you're kind of going for? Are you guys going for nose? Well, so with, like we're vertically integrated. So like what do we want? We want to have stuff that nobody has number one so a uh, slowly massive takes over uh uh we still have some of the hitters from other people but it'll be you know a big portion of that and you know we want to cover all the terpene profiles orange right. you know you want uh, primary colors like yeah exactly 100 percent. and then uh yeah that's the that's the whole thing and through that process find elites that are are really exciting and once we click that just move on to the to the to the next thing yeah and uh digging deeper and uh you know, we've been testing some of the males just to see their cannabinoids and, uh, you guys reverse them at all, or you just, yeah, we're, we're, we're reversing. We're doing a lot of that stuff. That's yeah. awesome. Um, we, we were doing, uh, a lot of cleaning of the genetics outsourced with these guys and, uh, do a lot of redundancy testing. Uh, and then, uh, there's protocols for cleaning the plants and then restarting from tissue culture so, so they, they oh, go so you through, guys are going through they tissue go through culture. testing like uh eight months and you know redundancy over and over for like T tmv and the the hop and then the curly virus and is then a nightmare that, whatever the next thing is so yeah um and and then by testing them multiple times you can see that's clear from the system and then we can release them back out you know they're gonna they're they're doomed to get infected again but through this you know you saw that research they found some immune plants yeah plants immune to the hop viroid so totally. whether it's the hop viroid something else will show up next week you know not next week but like there'll be another thing so you got to stay on your toes and be current with all this <clears throat> yeah science and and surround yourself with smart people and uh yeah continue to learn yeah and realize that you can't just do it all yourself it takes a team it's great Bro, working it can, it, you can't 
You can't do it all yourself. No, and it's amazing working with a good group of people too because it's motivating. You my know? guys shred. That's I'm, awesome. I'm beyond blessed, bro. Yeah. These guys are just like, sh- they shred, dude. And it's it's kind of amazing when you go to these different uh, parts of the uh, of the system and just see how big it is and, and, and like, you know, it's crazy. We have over uh, 300 employees, I think. Maybe. Amazing. Yeah, and Brian from Vital, you guys use his soil down there too? Yeah, we, we've had a long relationship with uh, Brian and uh, Vital. Um, yeah, Brian. He's Shred. part of you guys too. Yeah, he yeah, is. Brian. Yeah, he's he's amazing. He's an uh, he's an amazing human. I like him for sure. Yeah, hundred percent. And his soil is really good. I just got yeah, some delivered vital. the other day. You know, I, I, all my here, seeds but... have been made using Vital. I've always used Vital, and and then I became friends with Brian. And then at one time, I even worked with, uh, for Vital on the night shift on the forklift. Nice. And uh, yeah, that that was uh, that was a good time. So we continue to be friends and. Great products, Vital, Garden Supply. Um, yeah, he was on the podcast not too long ago. It was a yeah. good podcast. So uh, what kind of stuff are you working on specifically this year? Anything you want to talk about or you guys keep it all uh, in the dark? What are we working on? So, you know, we also wanted to bring some sativas like you're talking about. Well, there's a debate. Is it sativa? It's not sativa. Da, da. Well, there's obviously terps that exist in this uh, other side of the world weed that you don't want to call sativa anymore that aren't existing in this. So. We wanted to look for some of those profiles that we're actually smoking right now yep. and uh, offer some stuff like that, some preservation stuff. Also for this growing uh, uh, consumer market of people 60 and over, you know, mm-hmm. the boomers, they, the, some of the weeds too strong for them. They want a nostalgic yeah. effect of like, oh yeah, I remember when I smoked the Acapulco gold or the, you know, that, da, da, da. And it, it, they didn't get so high. They yeah, it's couldn't like they function because the they're old now. And it's just like, it's hard. So, um, you know, appealing to just different demographics. When they want to smoke a whole joint and not be high. Right. You know, like I had a chef that I used it's to work with. It's the biggest with like demographic that. of emerging consumers of cannabis. That taste. That's the one, though. That's like that combination right there. That's the combo. We should. Yeah. Do the fucking massive loud. Yeah, down. Yeah. We, we should definitely. Super this is one of the best ways the to actually figure out what Bro. crosses. You know, you smoke stuff together. This and then shit it's like, right here, though. It's got good wow. flavor. It's complex, and it's a. Uh, it's a hitter too. It hits hard. Yeah, it's one of those ones that I feel like it expands your chest, though. Some stuff. That's really, one of those missing things. Is that expando? Yeah. Where'd the expando go? Yeah, it got you lost know? somewhere along. The, it's got very rare somewhere. now. Like, bro, bong hits. Yeah. Just bong rips like the, the kryptonite weed back in the day. That's strong as dabs, bro. That was like yeah, that was, that was like some next level shit. There's, I've there's not a lot like of that. snappable weed anymore. Uh-uh. Bring snappable weed back because bongs are cool. Yeah, when they bubble and they're I clean. I got a huge collection of bongs. Fucking too. love it's that like, shit. Yeah. Bring snappable weed back. That's one of the you asked me. That's another thing I want to do. Yeah, lime green, crystally cripplers, cripplers for your bong. Yeah, custom tailored for bong heads. Yeah, I mean, I bet some of that stuff was like 18% that just rocked our world because of the terpenes, because of the flavor different, molecules. Yep, yeah, cannabinoids, definitely. Cannabinoids, terpenes, just co- different combinations of stuff. Yeah, pull it up uh, again, THC, yeah. H, THCP, or oh, yeah. do the research on your own. Uh, be surprised what you find out. Uh, learning new stuff about cannabis every day, but nice. THCV. THCV is awesome. Know about that one for sure. I got some dabable THCV that's been sitting for a couple of years and I just found it and took some dabs of it. This, it was this really joint could cool. have THCV in it. Yeah, it feels like it's it a, does. It's man. a likely yeah. candidate for THCV. Right. THCV and CBDV. I mean, all these things are amazing. And they're, it's actually considered hemp by itself. It's hemp until it's not hemp. Right. But that's the flavor. Flavor Bro, chasers are going to love this come stuff. Come on, dog. That's like... You, you, you li- yeah, I mean, it's good. It's good. It's solid. That shit that would have you hallucinating at a Burning Spear concert. Yeah. I could see this giving you a little paranoia, too. Yeah, bro. That, that's what I was saying when I was out there waiting, and I was like, fuck, am I going to park on the street? Oh, excuse me. And I smoked the Oaxaca, and I was like, wow, I got a little racy, and I was like a little overwhelmed. I'm like, maybe that wasn't the best choice. <laughs> yeah. But now we're safe in the compound. Well, you know, uh, and I don't really dab this kind of stuff either because it's so strong. Because the dabs will fucking wreck your life, um, at least in my opinion. Some of that stuff is so, so high. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But the flavor on that's so good. 
And we're just getting into it. And I feel like Bro, with those kind of things, the joint changes like in flavor. got me high as fuck, just those yeah. couple of hits. Well, it kind of really elevated from the stuff we were smoking earlier. We were smoking good stuff, but it's like, it's just another level. Another level of good. And then you show people those buds and they might be like, oh, bro, we're going to get that mid. Blah, blah, blah. And it's yeah, they look like, at it and they're like, oh, nobody wants that. But it's like, smoke it. Come on, fire up. The ugliest weed I ever smoked was also the best weed. So that's, yeah, that's what I always tell the homie. I was like, uh, what's the what, fucking uh, healing of the nations? I'm like, you got your ugly weed? Because he's uh, always got the fire, but then he's got those Ethiopian crosses. I'm like, what's that? You know, I want that ugly weed. Yeah, the uglier, the better sometimes. Especially the ones that, like, you have the bracts that are stacked that foxtail out. It's like yeah. some of that stuff that looks very undesirable is absolutely amazing. I mean, sour's kind of like that. Yeah. Sour's, like, on the nice end of that. But some of this stuff looks really bad where, like, the buds yeah, are just sour's little... like the, the, the one that's tolerated. But, yeah. Right. Just shit that will never get trimmed. Yeah, seriously. What else did I grow that this year? Uh, just in the backyard, I had some Zamal. Some Malawi, Panama. Nice. So Zamal, like the Reunion Islands. Mm -hmm. It was from A Seeds, and they 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 were they turned out pretty phenomenal. Dude, they're they're in my book too. They, I, they I are love those guys because the they just stuff. focus so much on that stuff, and I just wanted to check it out. Actually, finished, and uh, it was pretty amazing. That's awesome. Yeah, I think they're doing good work. I think there's, yeah, I mean, there's a handful of people doing really good work, and there's you know, I like I like the guys that are using stuff that's outside the box. Like, yeah, we can all breed this stuff that's around, but going back and, you know, you're doing the Lord's work going back and working with land races. People don't understand. Like, land races are nothing like, if you think, I'm going to work with the land race, man. There's a lot and of work people, that goes into some people, then they'll it. be like, they'll, they'll be like, oh, yeah, I went, got the uh, the Hindu Kush land race. And then they bring it back and grow it. And it's like, bro, that's some scraggle. Yeah. I didn't do what you wanted to do. And like you said, it got to take one, two, three times to master some stuff and like mm -hmm. tweak it out and, and and have a large amount of seeds in that case. Yeah. Well, Mojave Richmond said, once the seed leaves the land, the race is over, right? So, because it grows specific to that environment. So, the second you move it to a different environment, whether it's indoors yeah. or whatever, you're changing the environment. You know, the plant naturally adapts to its environment, too. It's like, we do, too, as humans. Yeah. You know, it's, it's pretty amazing. But the land race stuff, it's like, try to grow some Colombian and see what happens, you know? And some of these really long flowering, 18 weeks, 20 weeks. Yeah. Wild. And then big ups to the people that do grow those out, those 20 weeks. Yeah. For us to see. And You're a like, real badass if yeah, you can grow no, a 20 week plant. Like, I got a lot of respect. 100%, dude. Yeah. 100%. Because, I mean, I think a lot of people that have 20 week plants probably cut them at 10 weeks too. Right. You know, and I think that happens a lot or too. Or they weren't ready for the ride. And then there's a yeah. whole like few more extra, fuck, well, a month or two of, uh, of uh, problems that yeah. could happen, occur. Yeah, I mean, when you're flowering for that long, there's so many things that could happen. It's one thing when you're flowering and you have stuff that flowers for eight weeks or 10 weeks. How's the flavor still? Oh, that's one. That's a, that's like a top 10 joint. That's a top 10 joint right there. Yep. It's got nice ash too. It's got an oil ring and nice ash. And it's a day wrecker for sure. A terp ring on, on the sativa yep. banger. Yeah, you know it's a banger. Yeah, and a lot of people haven't even seen this to make a decision themselves. And it's like, you know. Yeah, people make their mind up by looking at something rather than trying it. And I think there's people that have that uh, interest in experimenting, trying different things, especially with cannabis. And those are the ones that get surprised the most. Like if you're looking for an experience <clears throat> instead of just trying to do what everybody else is doing you're going for a new experience right you're gonna find some magic out there yeah my homie uh uh, uh that lives in willits um what was weed he he he's been messing around for a few years and and then he loves the land races a, a, a lot too and then he showed me this strain that he made uh is the robert creek congo nice crossed with the congo congolese land race congo is amazing and bro it was like nuggets of this it was the stickiest land race i ever seen in my life shout yeah. out to homie bro and uh i was like man you're onto something with that yeah uh, it was like because you you think of it like one of those ones horrible to trim or whatever it was just sure. it was like some 98 yeah 98 chronic 
Wow. Crazy. Did you do you know the story about the Robert Creek Congo? No. No, that's I'm gonna tell it the best that I know, but I'll probably mess it up. But so there are there's these got the Congolese pirates running running weed. And uh and and then they were like uh, north of Spain. Uh what was that island? I forget, but this it shipwrecked on this island and there was this dude, Mono Negro, dude, the black hand that was a boat mechanic. And he fixed these dudes' boat. They were they were running bales of the Congo weed. And so he he like, you know, wanted to get paid and stuff, but he wanted like a bale. So he he like handpicked the bale or whatever. And from that he selected the seeds and he grew it. Fuck, I can't remember the island name right now off the top of my head. But uh he grew it there forever. And some Canadian dude went there, got the strain. I think that's where Jodri and a lot of people got it from, but they called it Roberts Creek Congo. Nice. And I think Roberts Creek's a place in Canada where they were growing it. But uh, that one by itself is one of those nightmares to trim. But his cross is fire, bro. So big ups to him for looking outside the box and doing something. Yeah, and the genetics are amazing. It tastes really good. It's got a unique kind of musky muskiness to it along with – it has that African kind of taste a little bit. But the effect – it's funny because Durban is also a region in Africa. Right, right. And Congo, you know, we're talking about two different places – and they have two completely different effects. I feel like right, the Durban right. kicks your your uh, head the in the dirt. Durban's another one that they got to find that, bring that one back. The real Durban that's like anise. We that's were just like talking about the other day. That licorice turp. Yeah, it's all that licorice. Ter- it's that's what it's all about. It's yeah, that bro. real licorice-y, Like that stuff will get you. But then red Congo gets you super high too. But the thing with the Congo is it makes me happy and laugh and like Durban. Uh, I think Durban is like an ass Cor- a little Congo's bit. Congo's like almost the north by uh, up by Morocco, right? Or is it more in the mid? I believe it's in the middle somewhere. It's a great time to be alive. I think it's a scary time to be alive and a great time to be alive. There's so many things and like with weed, it's just we're we're still in the infancy of it. We're still figuring it all out. It's not stabilized yet. And I think that's those are the beautiful times. There's a, there's enough for everybody. Yeah. To figure some things out. Yeah, we're 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 in the best time. We're yeah, and now. struggle is real, and I think, but struggle is okay too. I, you know, I think people shy away from struggle sometimes. You know, you just got to accept it and they suck it up, and then we're going to evolve into better times. I mean, I think that's just the way of life. Yeah, I, there's there's not too many people, you know, there's that have just had a pure plush upbringing. There's. There's a few, but uh, you know, I think. Yeah, but you need that, in mid- my opinion. You need the like the sour and the sweet, right? So like, yeah. you don't appreciate the sweet yeah. unless yeah, you yeah, experience yeah. the sour, and that's that's one unless of the things. You're Buddha, man, you unless just you're Buddha, go on your own path, right? I feel like the the tough times have made me appreciate the good times even more. But it's all fleeting anyway. Yeah, nothing's promised. We're we're just here, you know, occupy uh, occupying space and time. Yeah. What we're left with, what we're left with is our last breath, and it could be a breath of anger, it could be a breath of of joy. So yeah. you you choose how to live your life when it, at any minute could end. Which choice do you want? Totally. Yeah, man, you're big into cold plunging too. I saw some videos. I love cold plunging. That's I my love thing. That shit. Cold I cold plunge every dope. day, I, and I just love it. I feel like it gives. I I don't. I used to smoke before I did. Now I do it first thing in the morning. I'd get out of bed and I just go plunge and I do long plunges. You, I don't you, do the short ones. It's crazy to think that it's one of those things that like right now, just us thinking about cold plunging yeah. is having positive impacts on our body because we've cold plunged. Yeah. It's that powerful that you could just think of a time when you did it and, it'll and relax get some you. of the benefits. Yeah. I, I agree hundred percent. So I, I have, l- I listen to meditation music, right? right? So I listen to this music that I've listened to every day since I started doing it. And now, like, if I have it going on in my head, I all of a sudden get super relaxed. Right. So pretty amazing. Yeah. I like th- I like those ones when it's snowing out. That's the best ones when it's really, like, it's hard to keep it going, like, in, in, in the summer fully, like the cold plunge, unless you got the electric plug in or something. Yeah. But uh, those best ones are just, like, in the snow, just, like. It really makes time stop. For, yeah, for it does. And really slows, I just, I'm like, feeling down. it right now, yeah. brother. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's extremely- Oh, yo, I went. So when I did go to Amsterdam this last time, because I hadn't seen Soma for like twenty some years, and then uh, we we linked up and we we uh, spent some time together. And, and you go to the spa, there. bro. He took us to the the sauna ritual. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, I've done that many times. That's my thing. I I love. And it was like that first one, and then it's like the super hot one. Yeah. And then they got all the things that they're putting on 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 the hot rocks, and then they finish it up with the opium with the towel, (laughs) and then the opium drops on you, and you're just like ah. And then cold plunge, and then the second one's like. Yeah. Like pretty mellow in comparison, but the hot air, and then they ended with the uh, that Ylang Ylang flower that made Chanel number five. Yeah, it's one of the best scents in the world. And it's like I never knew that, that there was such a ritual around sauna. And then, and then of course, someone was like, "Yeah, you got to just this one yeah, security someone guard. Gets you got to watch week. out for this guy." But we could go over here and smoke the hash pipe. Oh yeah, and we're just like it's always we full, smoke the like, hash and the, yeah. He's like, "Okay, give me your coffee and just." scoops the butter in there yeah. it's the best just to put the butter in your coffee before you go in so he makes the most amazing brittle too that that brittle is something so, special I'm, soma's we're a blessed character. to have soma oh yeah bro blessed to have him yeah the spa experiences those are the best i'm finished and i love sauna yeah and like that's that's a thing from my childhood. i want that in my life all yeah. the time bro it's like oh you know that's one of the things i look forward to doing to doing every time i go to Amsterdam is going to the spa yeah and it's just it's always a different experience yeah. too you know, so always an adventure. Uh, yeah, I've been too high at the, <laughs> the spa before. Bro, it's right. kind of like, <laughs> it gets crazy, dude. It's just like, yeah, that's the spa. Totally. That, that stuff's good. That still, fire, still delicious. Right? It's fire. That's a good combo. I feel like those would be good together. I think they would breed pretty, pretty yeah. good, too. It was pretty fire, right? Especially because it's similar structure, so people wouldn't be upset because they know what they're getting into from before you started. So some of this stuff, if you were to cross it with the gelato and sell seeds of it, people would be like, wait a second, what's going on here? The plants look crazy, but it's like, yeah, you, you know, I think there's potential for this stuff too. You just have to be able to appreciate a different structure. Yeah. Like, like, but you, like you said, if it was an enjoyment and people didn't see it and then one and another... That yeah. one might be too strong for people. It might be. But it's really racy. It's really racy. It's got a good freaking uh, profile. But then it, I feel like it kind of mellows out too a little bit. Like I think I was more high like a little bit ago, and now I'm more like smooth. Right. Well, it's it's funny how extracts have evolved into rosin carts. Like where we were in the 90s, right? It, you know, that's when I first started seeing hash was in the 90s. To, uh, you know, Extract Trichome Technologies. He was doing the original BHO before anybody else. And, right. And then uh, rosin carts. We got into rosin, and now they're putting in carts and capturing terps. And these are really good. This is Jetty, and uh, they do a great job with their carts. They taste amazing. This is a Tiva one too. Like it's my <clears> morning <throat> pen. Yeah, I was lucky enough to move to Amsterdam. Well, I wish it wouldn't have been the end of an era, but the end of the great era of hashish when the, there was some just amazing land race hashish before it became uh, uh, dominant on these other cultivars and stuff. Uh, Real thing, Moroccan? Thing, like Steve Hayes, Moroccan, oh, yeah. uh, Moroccan, Lebanese, all just, just very so distinctly many. different. Yeah, bro. Um, He's actually the guy that brought me to to Neville, and then uh, that's another OG, Steve Hayes. Shout out to that guy. Steve Hayes sure. is a character, great this guy. Is like, bro, I was just young when I moved to Amsterdam, and they were like, "Go to this place and meet this guy," and he's just a gruff old fucker. And he was just like, he became my brother, bro. Yeah, so that guy fucking taught me a lot of shit, and, and he showed me so much about hash before it vanished off the earth. There's still hash, and there's good hash, but it's. It's different. It's different. Than it, than yeah, it was. There was so much more variety of stuff for sure. But yeah, so tell us a little bit more Amst- about Amsterdam. Did you live there for a while? You Amsterdam, so it while? was like around 2000. It was like, so I was always in his, the seeds and all that. And that's what I was doing with Eddie too. Is like I convinced him about the seeds. And then that's when the Eddie's medicinal seeds started. And then uh, we were doing some stuff on the side, like the Beaster side. So we, we had some funds available. And uh, just we had met some people and we're like, yo, that's the th- that's what we wanted to do is move to Amsterdam and start a, start a seed company, grow weed, because that's that was the apex of it. Right. Right. So we funded it. We we had a couple spots and <clears throat> we we moved over there and we were growing. And uh, that's where I met Don and Aaron. Yeah. They, they were like hiding out and this and that. And like, you know, they were like, OK, come down here. This is where you buy a buy a bike for a 10, 10 uh 10 euro maybe it was even gilder back then 
I think it was right at the end of the Gilder. And then, yeah, we just got to go down here and spray paint them silver like everyone else. And then, like, we just, we just raged for a while uh, while we were there. But that was a great time. Um, like, that's when I first met Soma and stuff. Yeah. Uh, went to net, meet Neville and stuff. Yeah, Soma's a good dude. But yeah, and, and then I went back recently, and Amsterdam's way different than it, than it was. Yeah, it, it it's was changed like, so much. It was like post COVID has changed so gnarly. much too. Yeah. And now it's like uh, it's like Las Vegas of Europe, kind of. And yeah. it's like, well, the greenhouse guys are now in Thailand, so like they're chilling yeah, down the in Thailand. The brothers for thing. sure. Yep. Thailand being, you know, I never thought Thailand would be legal. That's pretty they wild. They used to kill people for weed. Yeah. Not even too long ago um like singapore but like uh i hear that they're changing it again or they're not it's all propaganda who knows it doesn't look like they're changing no, it they got a new soon. president that doesn't like it uh, but, they but can't they're stop not going to be able shit. to stop it I mean, it's making too much money shit? for it's everybody making, everything's cheap in thailand except the cali weed right or the greenhouse weed too yeah, well, but like, you, you know, know, I got friends growing out down there. Weed. My my buddy from NorCal Genetics, Al. I don't know yeah, if you yeah, they Al got, they're from... actually growing fire there too. Yeah, for so, sure. Shout out. Yeah, there's gonna be some guys. Did Al? Al's there. He's rocking it. He moved so there many permanently. Are there. Yeah. So many people are there. Ed Borg is there, dude. Oh, rocking the, it out. Yeah, Good Delta old Ed. Nine. I haven't seen Ed in a minute, but yeah, he's, he was he's there character. in the original days. And oh, Adam yeah. Dunn. And Adam, I met him. He used to have a drum and bass. I think it was on Mondays. It or was Wednesdays. cheeky Mondays. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was and drum then and Chris bass. Chris Bliss yeah. was a legend back in the day. He'd cook everyone dinner yeah. once a month or something. Good times for sure. Amsterdam <clears throat> was so wild, dude, back then compared to now. And I mean, I guess we're older too. Well, so, when I first, well, I went to college in London for a while. And then I would take the bus and the ferry over to Amsterdam. It took like 11 hours, nine hours or something. And it was the cheapest way you could get there. Yeah. Because I was a college student. And then I just go there for the week and stay in a hostel and I just smoke hash and weed and shit. It's amazing. And that was that was way back in the early that was like cheapers. That was like ninety one or something. Wow. Long before I went there. It it was it was a different era. Yeah. For I sure. Ninety one's when I first started smoking. Same year Chem Dog. Ninety one was a special year. Yeah, for sure. For so many things. So Grateful Dead, that bag seed. The nineties was a great era for cannabis. It was. It was like the age of enlightenment to a degree. I mean, I think it was really special with all the different genetics that were being created and the, the people were growing quality. I think the quality improved. You know, I we understood technology a little bit more. We also thought three part was an amazing input for for I've, weed. <clears throat> I've always been organic. I was I yeah. always thought that was the way to go guanos and stuff and just natural yeah not that i haven't thrown some chemis on it here and there but like that was just my my thing. right i prefer organic for for the effect i think cocoa is great now but yeah back in the day soil with three part though there's but bro doing, back in the day know. that miracle grow that doesn't exist anymore totally. i see some old timers grow some weed that some looked crazy like it was miracle like grow kryptonite dog <laughs> And like, just smell crazy, smoke that shit. It would knock you out. Yeah. Probably not so much that the weed was so powerful, but the Kimmies and the heavy metals right. just dusted you. No flush. No, these guys would flush. I think. Wait, no, yeah, the, heavy, one of the first dudes that I learned that shit from back in the day, it, one, one garbage can, one cup of, of miracle Grow every watering. Wow. And then you switch it to the other one at the end. And then at a certain time, but it's just like, so that's, that would be a super low dose of it. This guy was, this guy was crazy. He had the, he had the Alaskan Thunderfuck back in the day in, in, in the eighties, late eighties, nineties in Tacoma. Wow. And he was, he was, these it was guys. was good weed in, in Washington. If you were doing fire. it back then, you had to be a little bit crazy. Yeah. Or a mad genius. And those dudes like hit out a little better. It was usually a balance of both. Yeah. yeah. But there was some. That dude was a lunatic, bro. My family, Washington, they were the, yeah, what, they've been growing a long time. Yeah, Washington in, got the chronic, the chronic forever. The only problem, they Puget never Sound. fucking, it, it would be so, the humidity was so high, it's really hard to maintain. We're so blessed in California for the humidity, especially in the temperature. But uh, our weed, it stays perfect most of the time. So like Colorado gets too dry. Washington, yeah, it would Colorado be too moist. Colorado will ruin your sack. Completely in Hawaii, dust. you got to keep that shit in the freezer. Just take nugs out. Seriously. Or it'll be dusted. 
it just browned out. And uh, I took stuff out of my freezer that was in there for five years. It was almost like it was frozen in the block of ice at the bottom. And it had been in there for five years. And finally, we defrosted. And it was some loud berry from back in the day. And this stuff, five years old, still had turps. So nice. freezers were good. Freezers a great way to uh, preserve your stuff. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. A lot of people don't utilize the cold chain yeah. for turp storage. Yeah, I think that's going to be a game changer in the future for the entire industry, though. You look at Lagunitas. You were talking about Lagunitas earlier, but I think. But what, what, what was I saying about Lagunitas? You were saying that Bill Gates now owns Lagunitas. Well, Bill Gates, I, he, he, owns, he he owns Heineken, a big chunk right. of it. So Heineken owns Lagunitas. Like, yep. So turn. technically. So if I'm wrong, drop a comment and uh, let me know. But I, yep. I, Shout I out to uh, Tony McGee and Legend. Jeremy. Tony right. McGee, legend, yep. changed the beer game. Uh, that guy was just believed in what he believed in and dude, just kept doing it. Him and Jeremy Marshall, yeah. I mean, dude, like the Jeremy Ooh. kind of has taken the reins now, yeah. and he's amazing too. It, you know, well, yeah, that's a there, whole but, different different side. How many? But how many times did did he fail before he, he became Lagunitas? A lot of times, blowing yeah. the the whole the city's uh, septic sewer so much, systems dude, up yeah. and just like. You know, but he did. He started that all from just a craft brewer set. Mm -hmm. What a freaking legend! What a legend! Yeah, what a legend. I mean, his book too. Delicious like, you, beer. His too. book is amazing. Yeah, yeah, delicious beer. And he was also very um, early on with the craft brew and a pioneer to bringing like craft brew culture to, <clears throat> and cold like that craft beer culture, beer circus, and just like yeah, the beer circus like, was amazing. Hey, I mean, that was they were like kind of freaks. Like so I was part of the whole beer circus crew. Beer circus I did, is yeah. one of the coolest things I ever went to. I did the food for the backstage at the beer yeah. circus for all of them. Um, so dope. And it was amazing. You know, they took me on tour to Chicago and to yeah. LA and we, we went all over. We were in Seattle. We were in New York. We did these circuses and just that group is just, they're a different breed. Really good people. All fun. They understand hard. Uh, the funny thing about the guys who did the, the beer circus, like uh, Vada Beer Society, and all the people that were involved, you know, that I was friends with, this guy, Travis, who was one of the managers, but everybody really knew how to work hard and also have a good time. Right. That's one of the beauty, beauties of life. If you learn how to work your ass off when you need to, and then also party when you, you need to or want to, you know, I think that's what life's all about. The balance. The balance. But that stuff still tastes great. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. Hit that shit up. I can't remember. This was the sour one, or was that the sour? One was PT, I guess. Sour, one yeah. Sour. The the oh, sour is pretty one? good. This one's good too, though. Yeah, a lot of good flavors today. So, where do you think the industry is going? You think we're going back to green weed again? You think uh, people are going to get in where they fit in? Yeah, you know. Oh, uh, so whatever they like, personal tastes. And just experimenting with that and just, uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people follow trends. Is green weed a trend? Yeah. Probably, I think, you know. I would hope so. I love I don't, green weed. Yeah. I love it all. I, I mean. I, I really I, liked I, I purple. Just that lime green. Uh-huh. Almost just like, ooh. ooh that There's nice. something special with that. I think lime green has its place. Yeah. You know, like the TK lime, lime green. green. Like the green bud has shades. Like that's, that's silver. Green yeah. sour diesel's got that silver, super silver haze, silver. Yeah, that lime green pine, just fucking mm -hmm. nuclear dog. Do like the old OG Kushes, all of them, and that TK was even more lime with bigger buds. But like that stuff, yeah, it was always good. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Oh well, man, I really appreciate you coming on the podcast today. If people are looking to find out more about you, where can they go? Um, check my Instagram, massive underscore creations underscore one, you know, and then you could go to enjoythefarm.com. You could check out Cocoa Farms, Antioch, Concord, V-Town, uh, Vallejo, uh, Pacific Reserve Farms, uh, Santa Cruz, but, you know, just get, tap in. Awesome. Dude, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks, bro. Had Let's a great do this time. again. For sure, dog. Phase yeah, I think two. we're going to go on location one of these days, so it'd be great to come check you out. Let's do it. Oh, yeah. We got lots of locations. So, That's uh, awesome. Yeah, let's do it. Cheers. Bye.